Hey, what's up guys? Jay Ho here, and we are actually getting into a review of the closed alpha for Dead Matter. So there was a stream that happened today with Mr. Atomic Duck and the devs from Dead Matter. Now this did start out by having a few service issues, which kind of worried me, um, but this is actually not even the same build that we're gonna start with at the closed alpha. And Duck is playing in the UK on Canadian servers, and he is over 150 ping. We do need to keep in mind that he is also using a 1060 graphics card and streaming on his machine at the same exact time. Uh, he doesn't have an optimal setup to show the game at its best rate, so definitely expect some desync and some frame rate drops as we go through this. Also, it is in closed alpha, so some of this will be due to that as well. In the closed alpha, you will have a watermark on your screen, uh, but you won't even really notice it after playing it for a bit. I forgot it was there after watching the stream. Uh, and they are taking this NDA very serious. You will see that the watermark does have specific numbers on it. So make sure don't record anything. You don't want to get caught or sued or banned from playing this game in the future uh, with all the potential that it actually has. Uh, even in 10 years, you cannot show gameplay recorded during this closed alpha time unless you have written consent to do so. So the first thing here, let's go ahead and go over the game and the quality of the game. Uh, so the game location is actually located in Alberta, Canada. Uh, there is two small towns and one somewhat larger town, uh, and there actually is very dense woods around it. Uh, at some spots, I didn't see as much density. Um, some spots, I did see more density. I think that it might be holding back a little bit of visibility to showing some of the loading problems that they might be having. Uh, the dev does admit to a few rough spots and problems with rendering over the course of the video. But this is simple. We are in a closed alpha. These can definitely be optimized over time. Uh, as we're going through this, you will also see some third party animations looking a little bit rough, uh, third person actually. Um, so as you're seeing from the outside or seeing another player, um, they're, they're mainly actually focused on the first person animations at the moment. Uh, but those again will be something that's worked on over time. They did state that they are holding a very high priority on optimizations right at the moment. Now, when you are fighting or when you leave your game, um, there will actually be a 15 minute delay. It did state it wasn't quite in the game yet, uh, but that way when you're doing PVP, you know that you can't just log out if you think you're gonna die um, because that's just, you know, that, that shouldn't be allowed in any game. Um, so they did show a 15 minute delay will be added in the near future to prevent that from happening. Now during this game, they did state that nighttime is quite brutal. They did show a little bit of the nighttime as well. Uh, they did actually show inside of one of the buildings. And once you go inside of a building, it is pitch black. Um, so it's, it's definitely darker inside of the buildings than it is outside. Uh, but you can definitely set up electricity or flick on the lights. And But keep in mind that you can obviously be seen through the windows like they have shown in previous videos. So whether it be the infected or players that can definitely know you're in there. So make sure to try to cover it up if you're in there at night. Uh, they did also say that potentially they would bring in night vision down the road. Uh, this would be very, very basic Gen 1 night vision and all the problems that come with that. Uh, but they did say that it is something that they plan on doing. They did state that they wanted to aim more towards PvE in this game uh, instead of PvP. Uh, essentially, it kind of makes sense after watching a little bit of this, and you'll probably agree with me uh, that when all the zombies start coming your way, uh, you'll probably burn a lot of your resources in just one fight, fighting off the zombies. Uh, fun fact, they actually put working vending machines in this game. <laughs> I'm so easily, I'm so easily amused. And uh, you can also drive vehicles, uh, but also go-karts. Now for your character. To set up your character, you'll first begin by selecting an occupation. Selecting the occupation does give you attributes and skills. Once you go ahead and you select that, you do get a couple extra bonus perk points that you can add as you do select, uh, do choose to. You cannot adjust your character skills once they are created. Not mentioned if this would be added down the road or not. Um, it might be, might not be. 
uh, but it is based off of what you select as your previous occupation. And that does actually matter for what you spawn in the game with. Uh, the gentleman here spawned in as a farmer and he started with some apples, uh, so it kind of makes sense. Now, when you build your character, you do get a very basic selection for right now. They do plan on growing it out and you can only be a male at the moment. You, there is no female option, but they said they're working on that at the moment. You will have a tool belt that you can keep even after you die. That's the game plan of it. This can be changed if you are playing in private servers. Your tool belt will hold items like your wallet to store cash, flashlight, binoculars, you can put your GPS, uh, radio, your compass, and there's also some additional items that you can put in there as well. Uh, but again, this is something, it's kind of like you're a secure container in Escape from Tarkov that you can keep these items even if you do die. There is not a clan system uh, per se, but you can invite friends into your group on the fly. You just go ahead, you walk up to them, you click the invite button, and then they are part of your squad. This does actually provide a nameplate above their head at longer distances. It didn't seem to work correctly in this build, but again, this is what they plan to have happen. So whether it's in it right now or not, uh, it's definitely what is going to be in. Uh, he was actually surprised that it wasn't in already. Uh, fun fact for your character, you can even wear Crocs. So if you happen to always want to wear some Crocs, just go ahead and throw them on. <laughs> John, John meme, everybody. Oh, come on. Are, are we really doing this? Re really? Is that, were those Crocs? Now for the weapons. The gunplay in this game is actually pretty insane. Uh, it looks very, very smooth. The guns look and feel to be weighted and all the animations are there already. You can definitely tell that they spent a ton of time perfecting the guns. Uh, something that I was kind of thinking about was if they make it so difficult to shoot a weapon, you know, then <laughs> why do they have all this extra emphasis on using the guns because you get a horde of zombies on you instantly. So they might want to look into changing a few things like that or maybe even making it so you could be silenced because that would be nice to be able to be somewhere and maybe get a sniper rifle and, you know, be able to pick off people or zombies from a distance and not be instantly surrounded by zombies just because you're sniping somewhere. Uh, they also do plan to put bows and crossbows inside of the game. You can use a flashlight, uh, but only with a pistol. You can pull it out at the same time. The infected will gather where you shoot. They actually uh, didn't seem to follow you too much. It might be something that they adjust. Obviously, the AI uh, is something that adjusts with every game, uh, but they seem to go to where you shoot, and if you run away from that, you can get away from them pretty fairly easily at some points. Uh, modding guns. It actually seems to be only done in storage space, so you can actually mod your gun while you're hanging on to it. So if you do have a backpack, you'll have to throw it in there to mod it. And this goes for even doing something simple like putting a scope on the gun. You can't do that at this time. Now the scopes do look great. I'm actually very excited for how the scopes look. I did actually even show some bullet drop. They did go ahead and get started into talking into very complex ballistics inside of the game itself as well. There was such things as bullet ricochets. As you'll see here, the bullet actually bounces off of the ground and up and into the gentleman's leg. Uh, this can happen into uh, friendly fire. So you wanna be careful, <laughs> you know, if, if you got friends near, maybe it ain't the right time to shoot because a bullet might bounce off and shoot one of your friends. They were also talking about ammo penetration. Uh, through different surfaces and different ammo, it will have different impacts, but you can shoot through items. Um, so that will be completely dependent on, again, the surface or the ammo. So your gun does have suppressors. Uh, that is an option. It does not make your gun silent. It just suppresses it. Uh, he went on to explain it as if you closed a door very loudly on an automobile, that it would be something like that instead of a loud boom that a normal gun would have. So it definitely suppresses it, but it's not silent. So it will still attract zombies, uh, but it will attract a few less zombies. They actually added in a pretty cool spooky Easter egg uh, zombie here. And uh, I'm sure that there's going to be a bunch of these all over the map. Am I looking for? Already. I want you to take a little walk past that ambulance there. This one? Yep. Oh! <laughs> That's super cool. So next we'll go ahead and we'll talk about the zombies themselves. 
So the zombies do have a gore system in place. I mean, this is probably for all killing, but we didn't really see any PVP, so I'm not really too sure. But definitely, it's in there for the zombies. You can see their blood, you can see their guts, you can see their skull. It's great. I love it. Uh, as we said before, the zombies are attracted to the noise. You can move away from that spot and get away from them. A uh, pro tip that was mentioned is that you can actually get cans, like uh, soda cans, pop cans, and throw them as a distraction. So that way you can get away from them. It's actually a 2.0 play, and I love it. Uh, the zombies can break down doors over time. So if you go ahead and you shut yourself inside of a building, it isn't like they're stuck outside. They will come in. Now, when you are killed your body can actually turn into a zombie as well. And in order to get your loot back, you actually have to hunt down your body and get your loot back when you kill yourself as a zombie. I'm actually pretty excited about that. That's a pretty awesome game mechanic. Uh, they did say it's not quite in the game yet, uh, but it is planned and that's pretty awesome. There is zombies here that do have tank canisters on their back. And if you shoot it, you'll go ahead and you'll see some smoke, maybe a hissing, I couldn't really hear anything, but I would figure that you'd probably be able to hear that uh, and they will explode. So make sure to stay away from them. And if they have a bunch of zombies around them, it will kill everybody around them. So that's pretty awesome. They did go ahead and talk about VoIP. So when you are talking to your teammates inside of the game or to uh, other people inside of the game, uh, you will not actually trigger zombies. The reason that they did this is they don't want you just going ahead and jumping into Discord just because if you talk in the game, it will attract zombies. You know, that obviously doesn't, uh, you know, help players interacting with each other that don't know each other enough to have a Discord set up. Uh, zombies can kill you actually pretty quickly. Uh, we will see a quick little clip here of the dev actually just might even been like a swing, maybe two swings. Uh, they definitely look like they can ruin your day. He did mention that the more densely populated the area will be, the more the zombies will actually spawn in that area. Uh, so you do need to keep that in mind when firing your gun. If you are in the middle of Canmore, which is actually the densely populated city, uh, you're gonna get a ton more zombies than if you're out in the middle of woods somewhere hanging out by a lake. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll talk about the basis, the looting and the quests uh, that were brought up here today. So there will be factions and the factions will have reputations. These factions will also offer you quests that you can do. Uh, you can ruin your reputation to where they will no longer offer you quests. So you need to keep that in mind. Uh, the dev did share an example uh, is if you went and you killed a bunch of their people and now they just won't work with you. It's definitely in there. So you need to keep that in mind as you're playing the game. They did mention that windows will break differently based on the caliber. Uh, like a nine millimeter bullet might crack it where a shotgun would just shatter it completely. Uh, they did say that they would be adding more fragmentation over the time throughout the closed alpha and beta builds. You can move items around on your base and destroy them, actually scavenge them for loot. Uh, so if you don't like the way your base is set up, you can just move things around and make it uh, set up for yourself. You can actually, it looks like you can loot almost everything, whether it be, you know, a luggage on the ground or a and I think one of dresser, the, the, the things about a this washer well machine, a fridge. When we're looting things like this, it's going to uh, take us a little see bit of time. Here, they're if we're going to want to loot like an uh, entire set of buildings, it's going to take us a while. We looted and found a stripper you know, outfit, so around random. In a single no, oh, never mind. Like I just I upgraded to maximum stripper gram, I'm afraid. <laughs> Where are you like at that. right now? The basement? I yeah, I am in the basement right now. There we go. Wow, you look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Guns will be tough to find, he stated. I said that they would mostly be behind secured containers. These secure containers will require you to pick a lock. Lock picking will be similar to Fallout in the way that was set up, uh, but there won't be any more marking points, uh, which is going to make it more difficult for you to know when to you know, pick the lock. Uh, so they did make that much, much more difficult in this game. The items in this game will be similar to Escape from Tarkov as far as the Tetris and the stacking and the searching and looting of items. Uh, you can rotate your items in this like you can in Escape from Tarkov and unlike DayZ. Uh, so yes, rotating is in the game and you are good there. Uh, you can 
even stash items inside of containers and uh, hide them for your friends if you would like. I did see in previous videos that you can make uh, containers that you can kind of bury in the ground and uh, set up there as well. Uh, you can craft your own containers too. Now claiming your base. Uh, they did talk a little bit about claiming your house that you will make your base. It isn't like you actually build the base, you claim it and then you can make additions. They did state it would be a lot of resources and that's why they didn't go over it in this video. Uh, he did give us a quick breakdown. Essentially to claim a base, you'll need to go in there and change all of the locks. You will then go in there and cover all of the windows and there is an electrical box that you can actually put a switch so that way it's attached to you. Now you can build additions. He did give a couple examples like a water collection. Uh, you can fortify it with bars and such. You can even uh, add traps to keep other players or uh, infect it from breaking in as well. He said it's not going to be quick and easy to claim a base, which is good because you can't use a claiming of a base to escape PVP, which is perfect. They did say base rating is going to be very, very basic right now. Uh, the lock picking will be the first part of it. And then you have to go in there and break down the, lo the door. It's going to be very, very loud, attracting a ton of attention to you. And there's probably not going to be very much base rating in the beginning of the closed alpha. Uh, but they did say that they had a lot more planned uh, as far as building up and the additions that you can do, as well as the rating and the way that that can uh, happen. Next, we're going to go over these servers. Uh, what was explained there as far as the map as well. So servers can actually be hosted on private servers by whoever, wherever, however they want to do it. They will be aiming to be long-term servers for the public servers, uh, but private servers can change that in their own regard. A cool thing about it being long-term is they do plan on having a full four season winter, uh, summer, spring, and fall. And during this, over time, your food amounts will actually decay. You know, the, the store down the road isn't going to have canned tuna fish in it throughout the rest of eternity. The zombies, they said, will actually start being less and less populated over time as zombies killed are killed off and such. The buildings will actually begin to be more and more worn down. The world state itself will begin to change. Uh, you know, when you cut down a tree, uh, you know, you will be taking that down forever. And so interesting to, to see how this game will evolve, you know, and, and different things that, you know, you'll have to do and, you know, evolve your gameplay, um, being that these would be very long term servers. As the playthrough was going through, uh, Atomic Duck did mention all of the ambient noises. You know, he was definitely blown away by, you know, hearing the birds and the wind. Uh, as you can see here, there is actually even down to raindrops right on your gun. Um, so as they're going through the map here, they did state that uh, he doesn't want an empty map like you do in Daisy. You know, he wants things to be everywhere. They were implementing more things over the time of the map. Uh, wipes are actually up to the server holder, uh, but like he said before, they do want these to be long-term. Now, as far as the map goes, the map is actually seven by seven. Uh, kilometers for the closed alpha, but the full in-game map will actually be 256 kilometers squared. So a ton, ton of room there. The safe zones and traders are in the game, uh, but were not in this build and weren't shown. Uh, they did say that these will be built out over time. Um, and the weather will be essentially it'll be map wide weather uh they isn't gonna they aren't gonna have like one section's raining and it's not over there um but they did say that the weather will affect your ai uh so all ai characters will be uh affected by that now i did know that we talked about the weather a few times they did say it's not in the closed alpha build yet um but it will be and they're actually excited potentially and in looking into the having in-game events in the future that would actually be really really awesome you know a ton of games doing in-game events these days now something i did want to briefly uh touch on here as we're going over servers is i did talk about hackers obviously this is a big problem with really any game you play ever so they will use the easy anti-cheat software uh, he did state that and he said, you know, we're going to combat this. They have a ton of things that they're working on, but he doesn't want to go over details in this because 
essentially, the more you give up, the more that you're arming the hackers to come back and work out workarounds. Um, so that's definitely understandable as to why he uh, doesn't go over that. And we thank him for not going over it. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll go over uh, your health and your food. Uh, so first thing I will say here is that he did say that you can cannibalize. So you can eat other people. Interesting. Uh, drinking and eating will actually be based on a real life scale. So the time passes in the game five times as fast as it does in normal life. Uh, so you'll eat about as normal as you would, just five times faster. There are animals in the game. Uh, you can skin the animal and craft with the skin. You can also eat their meat. Uh, their meat will spoil and uh, you'll also be able to gather wood to make campfires. This is going to be extremely useful for late game food supply. Uh, we did talk about how food will become more scarce so then you'll be able to uh, hunt for animals. You'll also be able to farm as well. Uh, and these are going to be larger late game uh, things that are gonna sustain you in moving forward. Uh, as far as your health goes, you do have a stamina bar and that will drain over time from running as well as doing melee. Uh, you will see here that there is an enhanced medical diagram. Uh, as you get hurt, you actually reheal over time. Uh, the dev did state that this is actually based upon your blood and how much blood you have in your body. Uh, your blood type is actually here and you'll see here it actually is a question mark. So you will not know your blood type unless your character's occupation uh, lets you see it or you happen to find a test blood kit to resupply, uh, to test yourself essentially. Uh, your transfusions will actually keep your health up. Uh, I'm actually kind of curious as to what would happen if you use the wrong blood. Uh, do you just die instantly? I don't know, who knows? Maybe you know. Leave me in, <laughs> in the comments below what you think will happen. Uh, so. Bleeding and fractures are not in the game yet either. Uh, they will be implementing these over time. One thing that they did say, uh, as you're looking through this and you see a bunch of stuff on here, you're like, oh man, this is a lot of stuff to maintain, is that they do not want you spending your day counting proteins. Uh, they do not want it to be intense like that. It is on here and it is something that you know you need to make note of randomly every now and again, but this is not going to be very, very intense like scum. Alrighty guys, well that's pretty much everything that was went over uh, the day before the closed alpha drops. So I hope that you're excited about this as I am. And I honestly think it looks very, very promising. Of course there's bugs, it's a closed alpha. There's going to be bugs. I mean, the closed alpha hasn't even started. Any game would be like that at this point. And if you don't believe me, look up any game at this stage uh, and they probably didn't even show it at this point. Uh, but the game, honestly, it, it really does look promising and I'm really, really hype about it. Uh, there is a small development team for this. Uh, it's about 20 people and they are undertaking a very, very large project. This game is very, very large and very, very ambition, ambitious. Uh, but they've been doing a great job so far. And I mean, honestly, the small, intricate things that they've been paying attention to really, really gives me hope that, you know, they're, they're gamers. They love this game and they're going to take great care of it. Also, one thing that I did notice that I actually really enjoyed is that they happen to be taking things that work great in other games and implementing it into this game. Uh, like I said before, like the looting, the searching and the Tetris that you do in your system, it, it's all very escape from Tarkovy, which is great because that game is good with that system. So it's something that a lot of people are really, really going to uh, be able to transition to and be really good at it right away. You know, this honestly could be one of the greatest games. They can sort out all the bugs and definitely get it optimized with all these grand plans that are planned for this game. I'm super pumped about it. Let me know how much you're pumped about it. And I think that if you want to buy this game, this should give you all the information that you need to, to be able to make that decision. If it was me, heck, I already bought it. So I would still buy it. To this day, I would still buy it over and over again. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to go ahead and click the subscribe button. We're definitely gonna be making Dead Matter videos in the future once we can, and you don't wanna miss out. So click the notification button and turn that on so you get updated with new videos as well. Uh, also, make sure to leave a like on this video. I mean, leaving a like is completely free and it helps so, so much. 
in the YouTube algorithm, you'd actually be really, really surprised. So whether it's me or any content creator that you actually enjoy, make sure to just leave a like if you found the video helpful. It, like I can't stress it enough. It's so, so helpful and we appreciate it so, so much. So that's it guys. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time.